just have a very simple question to ask. Why do people hesitate to buy antiques or collectible? And it is because it just takes too much time and effort to become an expert. Now, what if we can eliminate that pain so simply by simply scanning a tag and having the transparency, having all the information show up? And you add to that ease of use, and then you add to that trust. Welcome to the world of Piggy Tag. We have created a suite of tools for the professional collector, starting with scanning tags and creating tags by taking a photograph and transferring and tracking that tag through its lifetime. And, uh, and, thus, uh, and also the inventory management. Let me just give you uh, a little example here. This is the app. And here uh, is my collection. I carry this all around where I go. Uh, right here, it's a little uh, stalling a little bit. Um, but uh, here I can open up and uh, if you open up one of these, uh, th this is an example of what a tag will look like. And here I can scroll down. Now, we have a web version of this with just a little bit more robust tools. Now, but that's not even the most exciting stuff. Imagine you have just inherited this lovely painting from your grandmother who says it's from a very famous Romanian artist. O grandmother de bani! O grandmother de bani! And so you want to get rid of it as quickly as possible. So you take out your piggy tag app and you create a tag like, just like this, really easy, just add a few categories, click appraise it, and instantly you will have several appraisers who can give you a price estimate on demand. Interestingly, this kind of mobile app does not exist in a $64 billion market. Now, if you look here, most of the innovation, that's in e-commerce. And if, but if you look at how the, most of the sales is done, it's done the offline, no technology. But three quarters of these people have smartphones and only a sliver is using it to collect. Now, this is why this sector, I know they're a laggard sector, but it's beginning to explode. And that is why Christie's just purchased Collectrium for 16 million back last October. Now, what they're charging, $90 a month, we're giving it away for free. Now, why is that? Because we believe that there's a lot more opportunity downstream. And thus, we have an open model versus their closed model. And let me explain to you very simply. Once you've created your tag, what's the most important thing? How do I know if it's true or false? And therefore, we went to great lengths to create what we call the reputational blockchain. And let me just tell you how it works. Owner 1 creates the tag and sells it to Owner 2 along with the product. Owner 2 sees that it, there is not much written on it, so he asks a specialist to write up something, and he gets it validated and cert by a certified expert, and the score goes up to 105, and he sells it to Owner 3 for double the price, and Owner 3 takes it to a master and gets it inspected, and now that item has tripled in value. Welcome to the fun of collecting. And it is thanks to people like Monsieur Le Tessier, where we have focused our business model, our USP. And the reason why, and this is the accreditation platform, and the reason why is because his knowledge, even though he might work for Sotheby's, it's not being monetized properly today. And it's not even him. There's hundreds and thousands of uh, passionate experts who are not getting a dime for their knowledge. And why do we need this? Let me just give you a use case scenario with eBay. Um, eBay currently has very hard time selling high expensive items and the reason why is because they don't have a tagging system. The, the information is gone once you sold the product. And, and also their accreditation system is based on owner and seller, not necessarily the product itself. We are the missing link. Now we have landed Tajan as, which is the fifth largest uh, auction house in the world. And we have the CNES, which is the largest network of experts in France. We won the uh, face uh, startup competition, which is European wide, and we are currently at Pepinier 27, which is an incubator. We have raised 30,000 in seed, and we are waiting on another 30,000 from BPI France. Now, for this past year, we've been busy. We've uh, collected over 100 quality clients, and uh, this traction rate is much better than what Collectrium is doing today. And these are the smart guys who are getting the job done and we're looking for $300,000 to take our 
um, product to the next level and to really monetize it. And so many of us here have something in the attic that we know is valuable and want to get rid of. Uh, and the problem is, is that with piggy tag, we have transparency, ease of use, and trust. Now we can easily imagine this sector ex expanding beyond 100 billion because now there is an economic incentive to want to collect things like a vintage product instead of buying things and consuming things like IKEA. And that is our strategy for sustainability. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm not sure I got it. Okay. So I have a few questions, maybe your qualifying questions. Yes. So, uh, are you able to sell items through the platform or are you just for appraisal? Okay, uh, in the beginning, no. And the reason why is that we want to focus on the appraisals because our clients are auction houses and they use our application to source products. And so it would be a conflict, but um, they, the way the market works right now, um, there are auction houses and there are private sales. And private sales um, is the expert as the intermediary. And we would become the platform for the private sales, but right now we do not want to threaten or have conflicts with the auction houses that we're currently working with. Gold, gold. Um, so, <laughs> last, last question yes. of mine. So, what sort of transactions have already passed through the system and how you're able to source a prayer, a, a people who appraise a piece and, and people who would like to actually get an appraisal? Like what's the strategy? Yeah, exactly. Um, our strategy was to create first our 1.0, this is what we call our 1.0 first version, was to create just the, the asset management system and give it away for free to test it, to see. And we've learned a lot over this past year. Uh, our business model has changed quite a bit um, as we understand the industry. And for example, we thought we were going to go low end and uh, go to the trinket shops. But in reality, it's actually the high end that needs this. And even though it's a, it's a big segment, they are the bigger influencers. And so um, this is why we don't have, we're not monetizing yet. What we're doing is getting content up so that when people search for like items, they, they will most likely, through SEOs, land upon one of our pages. So, I, I, so just to clarify again, so what you're doing now is basically a marketplace that connects collectors with appraisers to be able to ensure you get a, the right price and then the collector will put up the product on something like eBay exactly. and there'll be a verification tag saying this yes. has been verified by piggy tag. Exactly, oh. yes, that's pretty much it. And when you said reputation or, or whatever, blockchain. Blockchain. blockchain, is yes. it actually blockchain based or is that not? Yeah, we don't need it to be blockchain. Blockchain is an algorithmic one, but since this is based on people who can cross check, these are actual people who are on, the, on it, um, we don't really need an algorithm, but the algorithm part is we don't think is very difficult. Um, what is more difficult is making sure that the, that the, um, that the starring system, uh, the feedback system, uh, is just working properly and, um, and that's our job to maintain that. Yeah, that makes sense. It, well, what it means is that everyone has to trust piggy tag, basically. Uh, in the beginning, no. But in the beginning, no one trusts piggy tag. Um, it's just that we have. We I think the trust will be uh, will will accumulate as more tags are put up, and there's more appraisals, and there's more feedback, and so the reputational blockchain right now it's not really functioning. Uh, it's this is what we want to to get going, and we need more content up, a little bit more content up, so that people find us. We also need a bit a bit a better app, and this is why we're asking for the three hundred thousand at the moment. Why don't you break it? Process, like, isn't it it, it's just yeah, we can't, but we, we can't. But it's it's just like it's but it's 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 um, it's not necessary. But we can't. This is not that's not that's not the most difficult part to go pure blockchain because we're because in that's algorithmic based. Here we have people who have put their reputations, um, their photos will show up on the tag, and so we know who who validated it. You can check that. So the experts who validate the the items, they have to physically do that, examine them, or? No, that, that we have several categories, and there are physical examinations, which are the higher levels. 
but it's probably they get paid per word to write about it and they get validated so they can validate it write on it or physically inspect it so in who so if, if that's the case, who, who, who uh, caters for the uh, logistics, which are especially if you're talking about high-end, which are probably quite complex, like insuring these items, and um, yeah, well. Yes, uh, that, that's why it's reputational. That's why there's got to be a feedback from, from the person who actually, who's a collector. So he gives, he, he rates and say this, this, this inspection we thought was way off, and, you, and he asks other experts to cross-check. And, um, and in fact, in this field, you have many conflicting opinions. And so those conflicting opinions sometimes create what is, in, what is interesting. And this is, uh, uh, but, but overall, the reputation of each one is validated by the collector themselves who pay for an inspection. Okay, I know we are getting, I'm getting hungry, so. Oh yeah, let's give my hand.